Sitting here with Square Pusher. Thanks for that sub, by the way. It was amazing. Thank you. Great stuff. And uh, how's everything going for you? Yeah, it's great. Just uh, coming to the end of a short tour of the U.S. Yeah. And uh, you've been, uh, how many records do you have out now? It's like insane. 15? Lots of out, yeah. About 15. EPs, all that stuff. 15 right? albums. I, I don't know <laughs> how many EPs. It's kind of lost count. Really. And you, your, your style is, uh, you know, you kind of do something and then you're kind of like done with it and you're kind yeah. of on to the next project. What What's sort of the inspiration time doing that? Like uh, The main thing for me is just to retain the excitement, um, retain the fluency of ideas keep everything uh moving moving ahead really i'm all about the future i'm all always trying to get to the future that's the thing for me yeah and, and you, uh, you, you you know so so you know whilst in some ways it would probably be more appropriate in terms of um conforming to industry standards uh, to, to spend longer developing a style in a more consistent fashion I'm not really that bothered about that. I just want to press ahead and try out new ideas as I find, you know, basically whenever I'm releasing a record, it's a, it's a product of my excitement about that particular set of ideas at that time. Right, you know, right. And if I move on, then the same thing applies to the next thing, you know. You're kind of capturing your head at the moment for exactly, what you're yeah. trying to it's, do, it's, basically. It's, it's more like a diary, I guess. Right, right. And... Um, Basically, uh, you're basically self-taught on bass, right? Mm. And you, I've read some interviews where you were saying that there's almost, you know, something to be said about, like, how music is taught that you're kind of glad in some ways that you kind of yeah. just came up your own. Because then it's almost like if you don't have rules, you're more apt to break them, I guess. Or yeah, how would that's you describe right. well, it? Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I did, at least certainly earlier in my um, career as a musician, I was trying to get my head around at least you know the basic music theory and and techniques that was as it were commonly used but um i do i do see that i mean it's not just sort of my speculation on the matter it's from talking to a number of other musicians who have had tuition and i think i think it can it's it's got its dangers let's put it like that right it depends what you want to do if your right. aim is to end up as a as a really well paid session musician um who can just turn up and play whatever needs to be played for for a given session that's great you know go and get taught by the guys who know how to do that stuff but I'm not really interested in doing that. It's never really been a particular aim of mine. I've just uh, always just trying to ex extend the idea of what the instrument can do. Um, that's not going to be that much use in a session recording right. situation. Right. But for me, that's, that's, that's what I'm into it for. I don't care about producing reliable, you know, take <laughs> after take, the same kind of margarine well, actually, it's it funny. Yeah, there was another thing you were, I was reading in an interview somewhere where you were talking about when fusion went margarine. Because I know <laughs> that you have a lot of jazz influences and stuff. You're talking That's about, right. like, in a silent way, like Miles and some yeah. of these classic kind of like proto and actual. The, yeah, but, the then, but then when it starts to get to like weather report, it starts to get a little schmaltzy. Sure. The margarine, basically. <laughs> no, it's hilarious. I like or, that. Yeah. Or, or the the ice cream sound, a little too soft. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah, well, the, yeah, the word fusion for me, I mean, the, 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 the notion of it. Is, is an exciting endeavor right you know you, you're it's two things clashing and all the sparks that fly when that happens is brilliant right so you know that says to me my Vishnu orchestra bitches brew and so on you know th this kind of material but yeah like a, like happens elsewhere and has happened elsewhere in music i think once the sort of formula starts getting nailed down and people start treating that area of endeavor as if it's Right. Um, circumscribed, circumscribed by a set of conventions and rules. Right. And, and that, that's that's up to anyone how they how they treat that situation. But partic particularly for me, it, it's where I start losing interest because you know when when people start behaving themselves, it's like that's not art anymore. <laughs> that's just a, that's just an industrial product. Right. That's a consumer item. Right. You know, it, right. it may still will sell. In fact, it probably sells better. Right, because people can you know rely on the description on the tin, but the, I'm I'm not about that. I'm not interested in that. I'm, I'm interested in things with life, spontaneity. Things have got you know. I mean, 
I'm interested in trying to make music and listen to music that, that always feels like it can be reinterpreted, that it's always got something else to say to you. Right, right. You, you know, can keep once, listening to it and it's something else yeah. comes out of it. And you whatever. start with a formula, I think you're, you're less likely to make music of that order. Right. And you, you, you know, you keep, you know, doing all these different things with mm. like, you know, LEDs and you had uh, robots sure. playing. Yeah. Which actually made me think of uh, like, you know, Colin Nankaro, who oh, he, right. He yeah. did like all the sort of player piano roles because yeah. he basically couldn't find people to play these crit, and that's kind of what exactly. you were doing, right? Exactly. Or yeah, I mean, uh, just finding robots that are going to be able to play things that human beings can't play, or how how were you approaching that? Well, it was um, that was an interesting situation. I, I basically heard about this project that had already got going in Japan, and uh, with a few contacts that I have over there managed to sort of squeeze my way into this project and because i just thought well is that not one of the greatest musical opportunities <laughs> you're gonna ever have you make music for a robot band i mean crikey that that's what else is it's there, pretty classic. That, 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 classic yeah for me i mean but actually i mean that there i mean there's a number of ways in which it intrigued me but one of the principal ones that was that it's uh that group was using a set of very conventional instruments but they're being played in this very unconventional way so you've got electric guitars piano drums you know these instruments that are absolutely synonymous with popular music rock music modern right popular music whatever you know these instruments surround us you know in our in our musical environment we're so familiar particularly with the electric guitar the sounds and the conventions associated with it and for me, it's one of the actually the instruments I feel less enthusiastic about using because of that abundance of stereotypes that associate right. with the electric guitar. Right. Um, but uh, having a robot play it struck me as an opportunity to try to reinterpret the sonic capacity of that instrument. And uh, I mean that there's, I, I think. Although, of course, the, the project, like every other one, has its failings. There were certain aspects of uh, what we pulled off on that, which I think would, would you'd, it's safe to say is stuff that's never been done with a guitar before. I mean, for example, things where they're just a simple fact of, of human hands uh, means that you can't make certain chord structures happen beyond beyond a certain physical stretch of right, fingers. Right, Well, that's, that's what I You can't I was pull it off. I mean, yeah, you just can't exactly. do it. And with a robot, it, it, it just stretches wherever you want it to stretch. Right, you know, it doesn't, right. There's no limit. Right. And, and the speed as well. I mean, you know, the speed is where the real sort of uh, childish kind of fun comes in. Right, right. But And it's, of course, not the only uh, degree of freedom I was interested in exploring. But, um, but just actually being able to play the guitar at a picking speed that is actually an audible frequency. So you can actually use the picking frequency as a... Uh, as a modulator oh, wow. on, the, on the pitch that you're generating with the string. So you can almost ju start to generate uh, amplitude modulation or, or ring modulation effects by just picking the string so fast it introduces... This other, a, a, like, harmony an thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so an interference pattern between the, um, between the, the, the various frequencies. Yeah, so and I was going to say, like, in terms of even your bass playing, your musicianship, mm. like, how much, you know, because obviously, you know, your, a lot of your stuff is... You know, obviously, some sort of jungle or kind of dance inspired in some ways. Like, yeah. how how do you how does that affect kind of the beat programming and some of the stuff that you're doing? How do you mean? What do you mean in I'll terms of like, into, yeah, and does like some of the because you know you're obviously a virtuoso bass player. So yeah. does that kind of come into how you're sort of approaching when you're laying down drum tracks uh, or just the background uh, tracks for your tracks? Yeah, it, well. I don't know if that question makes no, sense. No, no, it does. It <laughs> does. But, you no, know, of course, it, it does. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just trying to sort of frame the answer. I mean, it's, it's... I try to allow a free flow of ideas from any one area to another right. in my music making. So if there's some particular rhythm idea that I've come up with from playing bass, there's no reason why that can't then be transferred and modified into some sort of drum in, pattern exactly, or something. Exactly, yeah, yeah in, t in terms of a drum drum sequence. Um, I mean, but, but in order to keep those, uh, the, con the communication between those areas as fluid, fluid as possible, I mean, I'll do things like, I will actually play the drum parts from the bass. So yeah, using that's what, some that's what I'm asking kind about. of, yeah. yeah, so either using... 
like a MIDI thing or something? Well, or? yeah, it could be MIDI. I mean, you know, the, the, I've actually developed my own system now where I can convert any event on the bass into a form of data that then I can use to program and, and generate sequences in real time. So MIDI has its limitations with the, the, the format of the notes right. and the timing right. and so on. And, and, and of course, you know, when you're converting from audio into, into control data, there's always going to be some uh, compromise. But, but still, yeah, so, I mean, it, it, it will be sometimes the case where I will play a bass part, but then real time that will be converted into drum parts. Right. So, so there's, you know, I, I, I hope at least some of the spontaneity and flair that comes through from a, from how you play an instrument that that's actually much harder to dial in right. via just typing just in typing it in or or, or placing it placing it in a sequence precisely and yeah. you're and you're writing a lot of your own software right in terms of well yeah that this this you're album, developing your own your own software. yeah that's right I mean this album I mean all, all the pieces in this session actually are based on various iterations of a system that I've been working on over the last. 15 years I mean I don't mean I've been doing it for 15 years solid but but piecemeal over that period I've been working on a on a, on a software system which is as much as I can make it independent from other you know bits of hardware or preset software or, or, or off the shelf stuff and again it's sort of like in terms of uh, the constant experimenting then it kind of gives if you're creating your own things then you can kind of create unique yeah. sounds because that, you've created that, the software to, you know it helps to do that right yeah. i mean it, look i mean i think it's an interesting point though because i still contend and that's why i still maintain my instrumental technique on bass and whatever in other instruments i'm interested in playing i maintain that precisely because i i think that old inst any instrument with with uh, sufficient ingenuity applied to it, can produce new sounds. Right. You know the the, the church organ. You know it's a, it's an instrument that was hundreds hundreds of years old at the time, but when Messiaen was composing for it, it was producing new sounds. Right. You know, right. New combinations of colours. Um, the bass guitar, I think, is an instrument which is, you know, there's so th there's no way you can say it's done. You know that there's an infinite range of possibilities. I mean, even even like available. the aim and break, you know. I mean, oh yeah, it's just, exactly. It's just, it's just like constantly, you can constantly keep really? cutting up and twisting all this stuff around, and still, Precisely. you know, or, or other break beats, obviously. But well, I mean. that's right. So, so on the one hand, yes, I think you can take any instrument and you can look at it with fresh perspective. Right. Um, but that's of course not the only way to try and reach new sonic territory. You can also try and make new instruments. Right. You know. It's it's whatever it, whatever you're into. I'm into both. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, of course. I mean, but I, I don't think you know. The, 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 there is maybe a, a, a line of thinking that says to make new sounds, you need new instruments. But I don't think there's any necessary connection because actually, I hear, to be honest, a lot of new music made with new software it sounds old hat to me. Right. You know, it doesn't right. mean you know just because you got the new stuff. You, you you've still got to apply your imagination, your ingenuity, ingenuity to it. Otherwise, you're just a demonstrator for its particular set of presets and right. the tram lines that it tries to push you into. That the right. engineers who built it uh, thought that's, that's what this should the be stock used to sounds do. Sounds or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it should be used to do. I mean, well, you, you know, were even I, talking I, about in a in a recent interview also the instrument fetishism because now you have mm. like an eight hundred eight that goes for thousands yeah, of dollars and in the end it's like you kind of don't need that to make eight hundred eight beats. You know, I hate that world. I really do. It gets I a mean, little purist. I agree. It's it's garbage because basically it's a rich man's game. For yes, a start. exactly. That's the really exactly. sad thing Boom. about it. That's and there's true. a sort of a horrible mentality which uh, which is surrounds that world, which is that. You know, if you want the real sound, <laughs> you want to sound really good, you've got to have the real instrument. And that means you've got to pay a massive price tag. And I don't It sounds like you that. could do a commercial for that. You could do like a voiceover. <laughs> if you want the real yeah, sound. I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I mean, I, I really, I despise that world. Because, you know, the, as I say, it, 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 it creates this um, aura around it. So I'm not, I'm not going to deny that an 808 is a beautiful thing. Right, no, exactly. But it's not... 
a prerequisite of making great music. Right. If you want to go out there and make stuff, you just use your ingenuity and, the, right. and, and whatever instruments you have to hand will fall in line and they will do good things. You know, I mean, I, I honestly, I mean, I, I came out of a situation, I didn't have any money or any particular support. It was just, I had thousands of ideas right. and a sufficient commitment to pursue them. And that's what I'd encourage anybody out there to do. Rather than thinking with your wallet, thinking with the thing that was designed to think, i.e. your brain. Right, right. You know, and that, that, that will get you where you want to be. You know, rather than just pursuing this sort of hiding into nowhere of, I need the perfect setup. Right, right. I've got to have the right stuff. Right, right. You know, it's, it's uh, bullshit. Well, we'll, we'll edit that. Yeah, I <laughs> might well have to bleep that. <laughs> but you get the idea. Psh, edit that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, and then also, but you know, and what's funny is like from when you were coming up, and you know, things have slightly changed a little bit in electronic music since the Spy Mania days. And sure. <laughs> you yeah, yeah. obviously, like, yeah. you know, you you you're kind of been living through these different eras of electronica or mm. EDM, and yeah. it's just kind of uh, it's it's surreal because I mean, I think for a testament to you is that you're still basically making pretty crazy, you know, in a lot of ways avant music and. Yeah. You you know you're out there doing your thing, which is great. You know, I, I mean, I think it's not always the case for people making crazy music like that. Right. You know? well, look, I mean, I wouldn't stick my neck out unless I was convinced what I was putting forward was original, and worthwhile. I mean, I, I, right. I really don't. I don't want to waste anyone's time. Right. You know, right. I'm, I'm convinced of the. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because I, I I don't honestly appreciate it when I'm bombarded with things that just sound mundane and repetitious right. and retro. I hate it. You know, it, wa- it wastes my time. Right. I, don't wanna, I don't want that stuff in my ears. Right. And I wouldn't do that to someone else. Right. You know, but I'm quite, I'm quite hard line. You know, really, it's like I wouldn't bother. I'd rather I'd just go and get a different job once I'd run out of ideas. Right. And, you know. Well, we can, we can wrap it up. I mean, let's just have, I wanted a few more questions just about like the earlier days. Cause, uh, oh, yeah. It was funny. I was, I was reading another interview with uh, Luke Vibert where he was kind of referring to like what you and uh, Aphex Twin and oh, yeah. just like kind of almost like rubbish jungle. Like you guys were almost making jungle that was almost like a little too weird to yeah. the dance floor. But then it sort of caught on with other audiences. Sure, but it was almost yeah. like, you know, because I know that, you know, like people like Remark and, you know, you were mm. clocking some of like those old school jungle influences. But, I mean, were you guys yeah. like trying to make dance records or you were just trying to make like your own kind of crazy records? Or, I mean, I don't know. It's an interesting angle. I mean, when I first heard Luke's uh, plug records. Yeah, the plug records, exactly. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, because I, I, look, I don't, I don't stratify or categorize music. I mean, I, my early days of listening to music were, were just flicking through radio and, and borrowing and, and whatever tapes and records I could find. And I didn't ha- I didn't put it into a system of this, that, and the other. It was all just music. I, it was either good or it's bad. Right, the Duke Ellington school. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I, I guess. And um, and the and and when Luke's stuff came along, it sounded. I didn't think. Oh yeah, well this is just sort of avant anything. I just right. thought it was a great track. Right. Right. Whatever. Um. So I, I I wouldn't, and in, in any case, I wouldn't really want to sort of answer for for. Uh, what he thought he was doing um but for me i i did wasn't desperate to to emulate like remark or you know marvelous kane or right or exactly it wasn't yeah. really i again I, I thought well that's i love it right it's brilliant right but i don't want to sort of just fall in line behind those guys so you're going to create your own sound. let's just try yeah. yeah yeah i mean and and also Remember that I mean that that phase where I started getting records out, that was already ten years into my career of making music. Right, you right, know, right. I was writing music since I was a kid. Right, right. So although that's the thing that everyone thinks, oh, that's the first stuff Square Push right. did. Right, it's just the first stuff that came out. Precisely. All right. So right. you know that was a that was a, an, a a a period of time that I moved through and came out the other end of, but it wasn't. Oh yeah, this is me now. <laughs> this is me stamping my identity <laughs> right, right, on, right. on the world Which of music. Which makes sense because you keep moving and yeah, your styles yeah. keep changing and whatever. Yeah, you know? for, for certain. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, you know, there are all, uh, any, any uh, number of things which, which preceded it which, which weren't really to do with it. I mean, it, it, it's... Uh, but breakbeats, I have to say, I mean, it was, it was always a thing that I was fascinated by, actually, um, in terms of at least making 
making anything with drum machines and so on. So whenever I, I started using drum machines, I was trying to make them sound like brakes. Right. So like by putting them through guitar amps, things to really filthy up the sound. Right. Because so, you right. know you get the clean sound out of well the drum machine I was using those days a DR660, and it's clean as a whistle. You know, it okay. really does just sound too completely clean. for mica. Right. Yeah, right. It's, it's so plastic. Right. So I was putting it through distortion and compression and spring reverbs and really dirty EQs just to try and make it sound like a record, which is obviously you know part of the part of the sound of a break is not just that it's a drummer playing and a good drummer, right. but it's also the mics, but it's also the mastering and the vinyl. Exactly. Typically, typically they're from vinyl, so you've got all of that sound character built into the break before you even start. Right. I mean, it's Whereas, also the classic ultimate break, breaks and beat series, so, you know, yeah, that you that. just basically, you know, looking for those certain kind of drum sounds that are yeah. sounding that way because they were recorded a certain way. Yeah, precisely, you know? yeah. Although, of course, you know, once you start messing around with it, that all gets <laughs> kind of ruined anyway. <laughs> well, excellent. Well, I know you have, like, a, you know, a ton of other... Uh, engagements and all that stuff but we really appreciate you coming down and sharing some tracks you said some of these were actually you haven't really been playing out live right or you, you want yeah, to talk just super briefly about them the, the, yeah the, the, so the first piece in the session rotate electrolyte was um originally released on uh the hello everything album it's from 2006 um that's actually the first time i've played it since so um you know, it's a bit rough and ready. <laughs> That's good. But there you go. So, yeah, so I've not been um, using it in the set or anything. So, um, you know, here it is. It's sort of uh, dusting that one off. Nice. Uh, yeah, so that there's there's that. Um, second one <coughs> is is, uh, is the lead track on the new album. And then the third was Venus Number 17, which was from an EP for 2004. Although it was written in 2003, um, that has been used in the set, so I'm a little bit more up to speed on that. Right, but, right. But uh, yeah, yeah, there you are. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Well, thank you for coming down, man. Yeah, thank you. All the best, man. Cheers.